How does U.S. aircraft carrier keep sharks from swimming too close? The U.S. Navy likes to live life on the edge. Their life is not constrained to the ship. These sailors spend the vast majority of their time at sea on a boat. However, there are times when getting in the water seems necessary. It may be due to an emergency or to take a relaxing swim. The Navy has methods to make sure that their sailors are safe in open waters. They are always protected from the elements and underwater creatures, including sharks. While on deployment, U.S. Navy forces occasionally have the opportunity to take a dip in the ocean. They are referred to as refreshing and rejuvenating in naval terminology, allowing sailors to get some exercise. The USS Harry S. Truman, while anchored in the Mediterranean Sea in August 2022, became similar to a water park. Sailors jumped from the decks and splashed around in the warm water. When a large cohort of the ship is in the water, it also puts the defense and operations of the ship at risk if something were to go wrong, such as a shark attack. This is one of the reasons why many of the sailors do not participate in this fun activity. They act as lookouts and lifeguards for the people who are swimming in the water. Those who are assigned to stand guard during a swim call are armed with guns to potentially shoot into the water if any large shark is spotted. Members of the Coast Guard taking a break in swimming in the Pacific Ocean in 2020 had an extremely close call with a shark that is estimated to be between 6 and 8 feet in length. The shots were fired by a maritime enforcement specialist who was on watch. The gunfire did enough to distract the shark so that the swimmers could get to safety. The shark appeared uninjured as it swam away. If the shark had attacked and severely injured someone, a medevac helicopter may have been called to airlift them to a nearby hospital. Recreation like these are done under the strict supervision of shark guards and snipers who strategically stand on the deck and watch for sharks. The flight decks of these vessels can be as high as 60 feet from the ocean surface. There have been instances whereby sharks have crashed these swim calls and disrupted the leisure time of these sailors. Why do these sailors risk their lives to jump off the aircraft carrier? Swim calls are a huge tradition for the U.S. naval sailors. At the time of their inception, swim calls were an opportunity for sailors to have a bath seeing there was no constant supply of water back then. Now, they are often seen as a break. It is necessary for the crew members to take a breather from their regular activities and blow off some steam, which is where swim calls come into play. The commanding officer usually checks if the sea is suitable for sailors to take a dive by checking the seawater injection temperature before instructing the captain to notify all departments of the aircraft carrier. Not everyone that has engaged in a swim call has been lucky enough to enjoy the appropriate temperature. Crew members aboard a submarine have sometimes had to take part in the centuries-old naval tradition in ice-cold seas. It's a sought-after event as sailors are guaranteed to have a blast swimming in such a vast amount of seawater, even though they are required to stay close to the carrier. While preparing to jump off the side, sometimes sailors engage in a whimsical competition for more enjoyment. Some competitions involve sailors dressing up in costumes before diving into the water, while others involve sailors battling each other for the longest or the most skilled jump. What sailors having such fun swim calls turn out to be a distinct memory for sailors, even for retired veterans who are back living on land full-time. Sailors can leap off one of the elevators in the hangar bay during the swim call. The elevators bring them to a height of 30 feet, which is the standard height of an Olympic diving platform. Sailors must appropriately jump off the elevator into the ocean, or they risk breaking a bone from wrongfully breaking the water surface. After enjoying a long swimming break in the warm waters, sailors are brought back to the ship by scaling the cargo nets deployed by the bronze's mates or by the ship's landing docks. There have been other shark attacks on naval sailors who were not on swim calls. On July 30, 1945, one of the biggest tragedies in the U.S. naval history happened. The USS Indianapolis got hit by torpedoes from the Japanese submarine. The huge vessel began to sink along with 200 of its crew members. The remaining 900 or so sailors were stranded in the middle of the ocean for four days, while a good number of these sailors lost their lives to dehydration and hypothermia. Others were left in the hands or jaws of some very large sharks. Surviving sailors had to succumb to the gruesome experience of seeing shark fins surrounding them listening to the chilling screams of their colleagues, watching them forced underwater, and seeing empty bloody life vests back to the ocean's surface. To date, the specific number of U.S. sailors who were eaten by sharks is unknown. People estimated to be somewhere between 20 to 150 sailors. The USS Indianapolis incident is considered to be one of the biggest shark attacks ever. 
The naval tradition goes back as far as the British Royal Navy in the 19th century known then as all hands to bathe. The tradition was more of an order to sailors to keep themselves clean and maintain good hygiene. Fresh water was a valuable commodity and simultaneously it was considered as a prize or luxury to be hygienic. Captains would order the anchors of their ships to be dropped into the ocean, and the crew members would be instructed to jump off the side of the vessel and get cleaned. Deploying a war vessel of the United States, Navy is a highly dangerous mission. The vessel itself is a tremendously risky work setting. There are numerous safety precautions that sailors must follow aboard these warships in order to avoid sustaining injuries. There have been several swim calls off various U.S. Navy vessels, destroyers, battleships, amphibious assault ships, submarines and aircraft carriers, to name a few. As they jump into the ocean, the world is nothing but a private swimming pool to these sailors. Usually swim calls are carried out in warm international waters. Everyone needs a break. This is why there are usually breaks fitted into our daily work schedules and vacations, fitted into our yearly working routines. A swim call is a free time for the naval sailors. It's a great day for them to let off steam and chill in the abundance of the water on which their vessel treads upon. Medevac training is essential and intense for these sailors, and it prepares emergency responders for the worst of disasters, whether that be a shark bite, search and rescue operations, or a massive earthquake. In what is called a Cascadia Rising Water Exercise, a Coast Guard crew practices how they would conduct medical evacuations in the case of a massive magnitude 9.0 earthquake struck the Seattle area causing collapsing buildings and perhaps a tsunami. Pilots and crews on board of this helicopter practice a safe medevac. The helicopter moves above the target and the pilot must take into account the weather visibility and helicopter's fuel capacity to know how long the helicopter can safely hover. Next, the crew members dispatch the basket where it must be carefully lowered to the target below. Careful practice in lowering and pulling the basket back up to the helicopter are essential to ensure that an injured person can be reached and brought to safety in a disaster. Common disasters that require the medevac training include the extraction of a patient to board a cruise ship. If someone is sick or injured and the ship is not able to head immediately into port or another boat, cannot meet the cruise ship at sea, but evac is usually considered the last and the best option. However, several steps must be taken before a Coast Guard helicopter is launched to the scene of an emergency. Among the information to be assessed is the degree of medical necessity for an evacuation. Medevacs are expensive, and depending on the weather conditions and other factors, they could be risky. Even NASA astronauts complete water survival training. In 2017 at Fairchild Air Force Base, Washington, the astronauts experienced a simulated crash landing. The drill attempts to mimic the same conditions in an open sea including waves, rain, and low visibility. Through this drill, they learn the technicalities of how to escape an enclosed capsule in water, as well as how to use signaling and recovery devices. The perils of the water are not lost on the members of the military. From the improbable but still existent threat of sharks to the dangers of a medevac heist, Navy sailors, Coast Guard crew, and their first responders must not be afraid of the ocean or the dangers that come with it. What do you think about these swim calls by the U.S. Navy? Let us know in the comments.